Tonight's guest, Kevin Davis, with your hosts, M.I. Cuts and E. Zane. Mr. Kevin Davis, what's up, man? The Marine of Comedy. What's up? Good to see you. You too, man. First of all, man, I like to say, you know, thanks for your service, man. You know, being out there protecting our backs. You know what I'm saying? We know who got our backs. You feel me? We all. Yeah. Yeah. Always good to have somebody to have your back. That's for sure, man. We, we, you know, we think about next door, but you really had our backs, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. You was way way back. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, like we over there and you over here. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like we in Afghanistan and you in the United States. And that's how much we got your back. Got it, man. I appreciate yeah, you, man. Here, you know what I mean? Man, we, man, I appreciate you, man, having our back, you know, and being just the funny guy that you are, bro. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Yeah. I mean that, but always, man, appreciate any any compliment is good, you know. Mr. Davis, Thank you. let's just uh, jump into the questions because people got questions for you, you know what I'm saying? One of the yeah. questions that, you know, people be asking or that be uh, wanted to ask, what inspired you to be a comedian? Because um, we read on your website that you've been a comedian over 28 years. Is, is that right? Yeah. Is that correct? Let me tell you something. 28 years? No. Nah. Let me tell you, I've, I've probably been a comedian all my life. Whoa. <laughs> I, I say this for real. I say this for real because... When I grew up, I was really small. People don't know this about me, man. But when I graduated high school, I weighed 95 pounds. Yeah. Soaking wet, wearing some steel toe workman boots. Okay, that's what I'm saying. That, that's, how, that's how big I was. That's a true story. I was that big. I graduated high school. So you had to be funny in the inner city. You know what I mean? And that was my key in life was always I was just funny. And I had cool friends that, you know, like me being funny. So I think that's how I got through life. I never really, I think I always thought about being a comedian. Even when I was younger, I went to, a lot of people don't know this about me either, but I graduated from a performing arts school, right? Uh, I wanted to be a gangster originally, but my credentials didn't fit that. And I graduated from a performing arts school and I weighed 95 pounds. So that wasn't exactly the credentials to be a gangster. No. You know what I mean? And one other problem I had with being a gangster was jail had a problem with going to jail. I went to jail one time in my life, man, and it scared me like you would not believe. (laughs) It was scary. It was the longest, hardest, roughest three hours I ever spent in my life. (laughs) Three hours. I said, I ain't never jaywalking again. You know what I mean? Because they treat you bad, bro. But that turned me against being a gangster. It was being small. And so I always was funny, you know, just all throughout my life. I always told Richard Pryor jokes, Dolomite jokes, Mom Maybelline, Wild Man Steve. So when the family got together, I always told the jokes. I just memorized them. It was just something I did naturally. So. All right. And that, that, that's crazy. And you know, the funny thing is, I'm surprised you remembered all that. Because, you know, your memory ain't what it used to be. I'm cheating, though, yeah. Oh, I will cheat. If you see my eyes look there, I'm looking at notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's all good, man. Hey, but uh, I wanted to say, how was your experience, man? I know you, you know, you came out. I really appreciate you coming out, blessing us. You came out as, you know, just as a guest as well, you know, at, over at Indian Joe's. Man, how was your experience with us, you know what I'm saying, performing? And- what I remember, man, coming over there, first thing I loved about it, it was professionally run. Thank you. I appreciate you know it. Mean? The way you guys put on the show, you did it like top shelf. I love that part. You had the room set. A lot of people don't understand how to do a good comedy show. Yeah. It's not just having a funny comedian. If the room ain't right, I don't care how funny you are. It's difficult to, to, to project and do what you need to do. But you guys had the room set. You had a nice environment, man. You had a stage. You know, I love the experience was great. When I came over with just guests, it was a great experience. And we got to talking. And I knew you guys were, you know, true professionals. So I knew that the room was going to be great, man. And the experience was a blast. You had a nice, my kind of crowd, you had a mixed crowd. You know, you had, you know, so the comedy just flowed. You had white, black, Hispanic, you had everybody, man. And that's that's the rooms I love the most. Well, man, man, I thank you for that, man. We applaud you, man. For uh, real, man. I don't make that stuff up. Money. Mr. Hey, Kevin that's, Davis. That's a, great, that's a great testimony, man. We, we would definitely yeah. appreciate having you. 
I mean, it was a blast, you know what I'm saying, why it lasted. Now we're going through this whole, you know, COVID, COVID 2.0, 2.5, whatever it is, you know, and uh, yeah, man, but how you been living through that, you know? You know, I said to myself when this started, I knew it was going to be, because I'm used to like, pew, pew, you know, I'm used to bouncing off the walls. I'm used to doing shows, you know, I act, I do commercials, I do all this stuff. So when COVID came, man, I was saying to myself, what am I going to do? You know, what, what, how am I going to come out of this? But my goal was to come out better than I went in. So my first goal was just to try to stay active and don't get fat. That was the first thing. You know what I mean? That was my biggest thing. I said, don't be, don't sit around watching TV, getting fat, watching Netflix, <laughs> Ozark, and all that. Okay. I don't want you know. I don't want y'all to come get me out and push me through the door. Like <laughs> next time you see me, my whole head filling up the screen. Right? I was trying not to do that, man. So I started walking every day. So I've been walking ten thousand steps a day, man. So I got down about I'm down to about one eighty three. So. I wanted to come out better than I went in. You know, that was my goal. And but from a comedic standpoint, very difficult. You know, nothing was funny in the beginning. Let me tell you, it wasn't nothing funny. Them first month or two was nothing funny at all to me. But now I'm feeling like myself again. I'm starting to, you know, I'm loosening up and I'm understanding it is what it is. And since since it is what it is, now let's find something funny about it. And that's what I did. I found myself like working around my house, you know what I mean? I found myself, like, I, I can landscape. I'm good with wood. I'm ambidextrous. Now I can build a fence and jack off at the same time. <laughs> 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 I didn't know it, man. I'm either hand now. I'm, I'm, I'm ambidextrous. I didn't know I'm that good, bro. I think this is a bad time to be single, though. I can tell you that much. Who if you single? Ooh, he's got to be hard on you right now. Man, who you tell me? <laughs> Ooh, it got to be rough, boy. I like it's shit. Rough. This ain't I'm, I'm serious. It got to be rough. It got to be rough. It's some, it's some dudes going to be coming out with form like Popeye. You know what I'm saying? a strong game right now, boy. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> you look, right now, I'll stay with a girl I don't even like at this point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All I got like a little bit, and I'm gonna stick with him. Stay there right now. I ain't mm, just a bad time to break up. <laughs> bad time. For nobody right now. Go ahead, and say it. Yeah, right. So, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Davis, um, I heard that you're not only a writer or a performer, but you're a scientist of comedy. Can you can you please elaborate on that? Can you explain that for us? See, I, yeah, because I think I look at I look at comedy from a scientific standpoint and knowing the keys that make people laugh. You know what I mean? And then you gotta look at, like you, we don't like to say black and white, but there's a difference. You know what I mean? When you go to a black club, there's a difference than you go to a white club. If you go to the improv, it's different than going to bars. <laughs> and you gotta understand the differences. People at bars don't have patience. True. Some of them ain't there to see you. They didn't drink and you are irritating them. So you got to get in and get out. You got to tell them jokes, boom, 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 and keep it moving. You can't tell them long, drawn out stories. But then when you're at an improv, the people come to laugh. They're mentally prepared. They're there. Say something funny. And they're ready. So you, you got the time to set your jokes up and tell them. Now, when you do with a black audience, like when I did with the Black Biker Club down in Palm Springs. Wow. Which was a different experience. <laughs> yeah, let me say, you know. I can say I bombed a few times in my life, and that was one of them right there, but it, it, it taught me a valuable lesson. And the lesson was, you got to get that audience to like you first before they'll accept your comedy. Interesting. 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 You see, if not, you're going to come off as corny. And some of my jokes, because I don't come from, I haven't struggled in life with the finances and all that stuff, so I don't have those stories to wow. relate. So my stories are more of, of just being a father, raising kids and things like that. Well, some people ain't up for that immediately. And, and I remember uh, Charlie Murphy talked about that. Charlie Murphy said he went on the road with Martin Lawrence and he bombed six cities in a row with all black artists, bombed badly. He went so bad he was going to quit comedy. So he went to D.C. This, this is what helped me out. This is a true story. He went to D.C. and he was sitting outside the venue watching all the people coming in and they were all black. Now, Charlie Murphy is Eddie Murphy's brother. So he grew up in the nice clubs. He got to do the improvs. He got to do Levity Lives. He got to do all the cool places. He didn't do the chitlin' circuit. You know what I mean? 
So when he got thrown into that with Mike Epps, he wasn't ready for it. Wow. So he bombed five days in a row. He said he bombed five places badly. And the sixth one was D.C. And he said he was sitting in his car and he just seen more black people and he got more intimidated. So he went in and he called his brother Eddie and he said, yo, man, he said, what's wrong? He said, brother, I bombed. I'm dying out here. And Eddie hung up on him. He wow. said, everybody bombs. Man, what you calling me for? <laughs> just like that. So he said he was sitting there and at that moment he debated, and I've been there, right. and I give this up. And Martin Lawrence happened to be in D.C. that evening and came back to see him and he told him this, and I just stay with me. He said, listen, when you go to an audience like this, do not go into your routine. Do not go into your comedy. You got jokes. You can see, you can observe when you came in here, you seen the building, you seen how people dress, you see how people talk, you see my man's afro, you seen the midget, you seen all this stuff that gives you ammunition to talk about. And the people in the audience seen the same thing you seen. They just waiting for you to bring it up. Wow. So Charlie went on stage and the first five minutes of his set, he just talked about the audience, talked about being late, talked about all that. And the same material he bombed with, he killed. Wow. Because of the mindset. They said it. He's funny. Once they say that, you got him. Got him. It's over, him. man. But if you don't get them to buy into your comedy, it's very hard to come up that hill. And that's what I mean about the science, is understanding what triggers people, what makes people laugh, and knowing your different audiences. You got to know your different audiences. You just can't come out and throw the same comedy at everybody. Hopefully you got enough material that you can make them adjustments, you know what I mean? Tell the people, you know, like, some of the highlights of your career, you know what I'm saying, like, as far as, like, TV shows, commercials, or the movies you've been in, you know? Okay, that's cool. Uh, first, one of my highlights, I think, was meeting uh, Spike Lee. Oh, wow. I was at the comedy store, standing outside, just kicking it, and what? Spike was walking by, and I said, what's up, Spike? And he said, oh, what's up, brother? And he just stopped. And we kicked it for like 20 minutes. Wow. Talked about do the right thing and just laughing and joking. And, and that's the kind of stuff. Uh, Marsha Warfield. Right. Very, very nice lady. Uh, uh, she was in court TV or whatever. It was a very funny comedian, but just a beautiful lady to hang out with. Uh, who else? Highlight. I did a Steve Harvey show. That was fun. Wow. That was good. That was good. Uh, I was in, just in Swag Inc. on BET. Oh, okay. I'm, in, I'm in that movie. I've done a commercial down in San Diego. Smokey, uh, Soby Joe's commercial. Them posters, that's me. If you see Smoke, uh, Soby Joe's. Them oh. big posters on the highway, that's me. Oh, that's what's up. Okay. Hey, I'm going to need some of them coupons, man. I know you got to hook up. I didn't give me nothing but some couple downs. <laughs> the highlights of this job, man, you meet people all the time. You know, you may open up for somebody, that, the unknown comic. Remember him from back in the day? Right. I opened for him in Vegas. Uh, that was a blast. Eddie Griffin. Man, he yeah, he's funny. Yeah. Him and kick it with him and talk. But this job, man, puts you in that position. Guy Tory, real cool people, who was one of the original kings of comedy. People didn't know that. But Guy Tory, great people, man. So a lot of highlights. And, and comedy opened up me to doing movies and and. Commercials. Yeah. I went to Hollywood yesterday and we shot a commercial. Uh, of course, we respected social distancing, but it made it different. So you only had three people on the shoot. You had the cameraman, the producer, and uh, one other guy. That was it. The whole building was empty except us. Wow, that's so sad. Kind of different. You know, it was kind of eerie. Normally, when you do a, a, a shoot, it's energy, it's people buzzing around. You know, like when I did, uh, what was the show? What's my man? Um, or Urkel. All right. Me and him did a show together. Yeah. And, uh, he was fun, man. He was fun. He was, he was fun. But the energy. Oh, like, no energy. Fun. Yeah, that's what's up. It was the energy. So when you're doing this stuff now, it ain't the same. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you're doing it. You're going through the motions. I, I, I say it like this. Doing a comedy now, like say a virtual comedy show, is like having sex with a blow-up dog. <laughs> I mean, serious. All the elements are there, but you just don't. It, it just ain't right. You know what I'm saying? It, it's like ordering tacos at Burger King. You know what I mean? It, 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 something ain't right with it. The Marine of Comedy. 
and that's on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, if you want to send me money, Venmo, uh, Cash App, it's all the Marina Comedy. You know what I mean? I try to keep it simple. My website is themarinacomedy.com, but everything is the Marina Comedy. You know, and, and uh, any shoutouts that you like to give to uh, any people, any uh, any projects that you got coming up? Can you uh, you can tell projects us? coming up? We're gonna be doing an actual live comedy show. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, I need to know about that because I'm coming. July 25th. Man, I'm in there. Beautiful Temecula, California. Man, I'm uh, there, there, man. Bless and me. Man. Is Thai Fusion. Showtime is 8 o'clock, and it's just, I got three headliners. Uh, we got Steve Briggs, national headliner, JT Turner. He's on the Speedy Show, 5150. And special guest is my man, uh, Henry Coleman who is on the verge of blowing up, man. And he called me that day and said, man, can I get on the show? I need to be in front of some world people. I said, I got you, man. So we are looking forward to just entertaining people. Social distance will be in effect, but it will be a real comedy show. That's cool, That's man. Right. And I know people are dying to get out. Oh, I don't mean dying, literally. But yeah. people want to see real comedy. You know what I mean? They can watch the virtual, man, but I don't sit on the chair and tell jokes, man. That ain't never been me. Yeah, I, I would definitely uh, want to be a part of that, man. You know, come out, yeah. bring the camera crew, you know, get a lot of Definitely. That'd be great for y'all to cover that. That'd be great. Man, that's what's up, man. But it's time for this question. Are you ready for this man, it's, question? It's about a, hey, truth be told, man. Truth be told. Hey, I'm a, uh, I'm a guy. Go ahead, we're going to do go ahead, three go of us. Three of us? We got three. Bam. We, we're going to do it like poker. <laughs> I'm going to do lots the cards. Here we go. We don't know what's on them. You only got three. All right, go ahead. Here we go. And I'm gonna start you off. What is the grossest thing you ever eaten? Monkey. Oh! oh. <laughs> hey, did it get up and walk away from you though? No, it tastes like chicken. <laughs> it tastes like chicken. <laughs> you put the barbecue sauce on anything, it tastes like chicken. So I was in the Philippines, man. I didn't know it was monkey. They told me it was pork. But I thought something was tricky because I didn't see no pigs, right? <laughs> <laughs> My man said, they on the stick. I was like, that makes sense. <laughs> but I did see a lot of monkeys over there. And that's what it was. It was monkey. I thought you were talking about a different type of monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't eat no monkey brain, though. They eat monkey brain, too, but I didn't get no brain. I mean, which song drives you crazy? It was a song, man. We were getting ready to try to save the hostages. And I ran years ago. I was in Okinawa. We got the call. So we were working 18 hour days. I'll never forget this. 18 hour days. And we had an eight track. And it was Johnny Paycheck. Take this job and shove it. Oh, wow. And they played it for 12 hours straight. Wow. Three days in a row. Three days in a row. Next time I heard country music, I threw up. You know what I'm saying? It was that bad, bro. It was. I, ha I had a terrible response to it. I'm better now. It took me years to get over that. But yeah. I remember, take that job and shove it. I ain't, then I hear that click. You remember the eight? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have enough songs. They put it on there two or three times, right? So you just heard it over and over. It drove me crazy. I couldn't even spend the country for years. <laughs> God, See, now, now I hate that song. That was one of my favorite <laughs> shit. Go ahead, Shannon. What you got, man, Mr. Davis? If you had to give up your cell phone, TV, iPod, or computer, which one would you choose? Oh, I'd give up any two other than the computer. You know why? Yeah. I can talk on my computer. <laughs> I can listen to music on my computer. Everything I need to do, I can do on my computer. You know what I mean? I can give a damn about that phone and that iPad. But this thing right here, this thing right here, and you know what that does for me? Makes me money. Cause I'm a graphic artist and I'm an editor. What movie or song are you embarrassed to admit liking? Um, oh, I, I like I touch myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> <I> touch myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a groove to it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> I touch myself. I want you to know me. Yeah, I used to do karaoke, man. So you know, I got some weird songs in my head, but no, that's all good. Yeah, definitely. Hey, man, it was, hey, bro, it was a pleasure hanging out with you. Hey, I want to send a shout out to our sponsor, Eargasm Earplugs. They are like, man, we're gonna bring you some. You know, okay. you.
You in an area where it's too loud? These are earplugs. They come in a nice little case, hang on your keychain. So uh, yeah, really tiny, huh? yeah, here guys, some earplugs. Yeah, they're man, they're awesome. It's something like you never seen before, you know. So yeah, definitely, bro. And uh, so yeah, noise canceling, pretty much. You know, hey, I, hey, I use, hey, I use them around here all the time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, uh, did, did, what about that check? Uh, <laughs> did, hey, bring some of them out to the show when you come on the twenty fifth. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I got you, bro. And also, I'm gonna give you one of these. What's so funny? Mask. I wear it, man. Bring it that night. I will wear it on stage. Got you, man. You got my support, man. Whatever y'all do, bro. We got a little care package for you. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm like I said, it was a pleasure having you. Yes, sir. Anybody out there want to cash app us? Dollar sign WSF Comedy, baby. You already know <laughs> what it is, man. And you, man, just keep doing what you're doing. You are on the right path. We will be at your show on the 25th. Come on out there, man. Have a drink, have a meal, enjoy yourself. And uh, you guys, though, keep doing what you're doing, man. Because you're creating something for these comedians to get out and you create great venues. I know the next one y'all do is going to be better than the last one. I'm, 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 I'm excited about it. Hopefully y'all give me the host sometime. I'm about to say y'all get pee, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the I love the pee, man. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I love the pee. I love the pee. But damn, pee, give me a little slut in there, bro. You know, y'all ain't taking all the hosting spots, man. Come on. Hey, right. any last shout outs? Any last thing? Anything? Final words you uh, want to say before you get you out know, of here? We work together a lot. Me, P, uh, Aaron Wesley, Big, Big uh, Weezy. We all work together a lot, man. That's what's and up. The true, them are the true vets. And then three of the truest guys I know in the game right there. I love those guys, man. I mean, you guys got a good spirit, bro. Like, I'm, it was really a pleasure having you guys. Yeah, we definitely have you now a part of history. You are now a part of the crew right here, man. The, the alumni, you know, so you're part of history, bro. So we'll definitely I really get you back. You. We'll definitely get you back over here too. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, know, man. You know how much I like being over with y'all, man. We always have a blast just sitting in the back talking. Half the fun for me is when we just chop it up. You know that. That's half the fun for me, man. When we just talk and we just kick it before and after the show, I just love that. Just listen to y'all stories about the stuff y'all did and who y'all worked with. You know, so that, that's exciting too, man. It's just, it ain't just about us, man. It's about y'all. It's about the team. It's about us working together to build something. You know, and that, that's what I'm about. Hey, here, what's so funny, my whole thing is is no big eyes and no little use. You know what I'm saying? That's We're all equal. You know, no big eyes, no little use. Stay COVID fresh. Till next time, bro. I'll see you at the show. I love you, Kevin. We out. See y'all later, man. Have a great one. Show some love right there, right there. What's so funny? In stereo baby. They gave me some nice masks, and it says what's so funny on it right here, right? All right. Now I was gonna give one away, but I got a girl that I'm with, so I'm giving her that. So all right, so you got, I'm gonna have sex tonight, and I, I gotta do what I gotta do. That's, that's just the way life is. Hey, if y'all got an excellent one, I will give it away, but I ain't giving away this one. Man. <laughs> just being honest, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just a mask, right? Well, hold up. If you got the mask, you get the ass. That's just how it is. How you feel, Brother, it was just felt so good to be on a, a stage with real people. Right, right. And to have an audience responding, man. man. It was like, I had, I had, like, I remember when I started five years ago, <laughs> it felt the same way. I was, like, nervous, and I just wanted to get out there and just, and my energy was just all over the place, man. So my comedy, I purposely didn't want to do a straight set. I just wanted to have fun. I just wanted to feel the audience. Right. And I think I, I got them started. So the show after that was just bananas. Man, we're we're really appreciating, man. It was some great food out here tonight. Great comedy. Yes. You know, we come to support you. Yes, sir. Um, we we definitely appreciate you, you know, being on our podcast via Zoom. So, you know, you guys check this out. It's all going to be wrapped into one. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know, because he told you he could build a fence and jack, jack off at the same, same time. Because I'm out next year. I'm yeah, I'm yeah. I'm a, see, now one of my forms is bigger than the other now. See? Right. Before, I just had this one huge form. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, take that jacket <laughs> off. You I look, yeah, I look like Popeye. <laughs> so let me ask you something. How, how does it feel to be back into the scene? Like, you know, back to do, doing what you regularly do? Man, I'm, I'm seriously, I don't even know how to, like, the feeling I got, in, the, the emotional feeling. To get on stage and do what you love to do, man, and that's just make people laugh, man. It, it's 
like what you get out of that when you on that stage and you hear them people laughing and you went to a room where nobody ever seen you how, how does before. that feel it's, it's incredible man it just mm. and it fires you up you know right. virtual comedy never will match that yeah that virtual stuff on and it, it never that that is what it's about it's just being in front of people and just being you man and just telling your story man you put together a really great show tonight hey miss marie <laughs> yes she's joining the beautiful us. the beautiful, the beautiful miss, marie. miss marie let me say uh, hey, man, you had a lot of great comics. Uh, who did you have on the show tonight? Tonight, uh, we started out with Sam Ridley, yeah. Air Sam Force Ridley, veteran. Very funny. Very funny. Then we went with, uh, from Def Comedy Jam. Right, right. Uh, Henry Coleman. Very funny, And man. I knew he was going uh, to push some buttons, yeah. <laughs> and then we finished off with Stephen Briggs, who's with True TV. He's on Netflix. The guy's got all kind of stuff very going on. And I wanted tonight, to bring bro. a diverse bit of right. comedians. I don't want one-dimensional. Right. I want us to hit... Every, I want somebody to leave the night and say, nice I like nice that guy. Set. It was a nice set. Yes, I yes. Loved it. I Everyone loved it. I was enjoyable, it. like I said. It was a small crowd. Love the food, we'll but, be but back. Big, Energy. Big comedians. Yes, yeah, but we needed a small crowd to do the, the to support the, the social distancing and all that. Correct. We got to do it. You got to so, do it. I mean, it, but the energy, the energy, man. And I wanted to come out and get that energy going. I just want the people to get fired up and say, man, I'm out. I can enjoy this. Yes. I can laugh a little bit, you know what I mean? Then I can put my mask. Feel safe, right? Man, you, yes. you sure Obama wasn't coming tonight? Well, All these damn security up there. Yeah, and good. they look good, didn't they? They look good, man. Bunch of Marines, like a, man. We got 100 security up there tonight, <laughs> man. I'm like, ha, We have more security than we have fans, no? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never seen security at their own table. They were tight. They were tight, man. They, they were tight. tight. They, they did tight, their thing. Big shout out to all the Marines out there. Keep doing what you're doing because you know what? We sleep better at night knowing yes, we doing what you're doing. It's my brothers. Yes, yeah, sir. Brothers, hey, man, but man. thank you, though. I, mean, I want to thank you, brother. Come on, man. Thank you, you know, for all from, your, hey, you do and all your support. From bro. day one, ain't been nothing but a family. That's what's up. I, I, I remember sitting in the windowsill <laughs> at Indian. Was it Indian Joe? Indian Joe. And we just sat in the windowsill and we just chopped. It up Shopping for like it hours. Up. I forgot I had to go up. We had talked so good. Is like, you up? I was like, really? You know, because yeah. I'm really enjoying my conversation because you know, you guys, what you've done in the comedy world, yeah. and I was just intrigued by the stories you guys had, right. and that's what, and we connected that day. You know, and, and, we'll and we'll, you, man. we'll be connected. Yeah. And we so thank you, thank we'll come back out, we'll man. follow you around, yes, we'll bring the cameras out, and uh, we a team, bro. Yeah, I mean, you talk next week. So, and he's a, and listen, if I ain't back Tuesday, <laughs> send help. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Henry Coleman, <laughs> one of the funniest com comics uh, from Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sam Yo, Ridley. What's up? What's up? It's Stephen Briggs, the Uncircumcised Assassin. What's going on? Good to see you. I'm Sam Ridley, and I'm circumcised, so <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Yeah, black mama's getting circumcised. <laughs> yeah, we can, okay, what's your, your, your comedy where, podcast? Where, 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 you from? where I'm from? New York. New York. Uh, oh, the podcast, Illegal Opinions Podcast, Spotify, Apple, everywhere you listen to stuff, man. We going crazy yeah, every Sunday, yeah. so support yeah. Them, yeah. check us out. Yeah. Yeah. Check us out. Yeah. yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah. You guys had a funny set tonight, man. Thank I'm gonna you. Thank you, Get man. a chance Thank to meet you guys, and hopefully we can get you at the black table at What's So Funny on set and... You know, hey man, we'll let it have you guys. Keep well, you doing what you're to doing. Them because you looked at them, the black table, and I was like, <laughs> oh, 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 no, the table was black. Oh, okay, okay, like, okay, cause you look at them, you're like, oh, get y'all at the black table. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm caught, I'm caught, I'm caught, caught it. <laughs> you're like, this guy right here. It's just cute. They're like, they're, you're like, they're like, Steve, you could be our Uber driver. <laughs> it's like Jada got a red table. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But it ain't just red people okay. to talk to. You can check us in. You know. uh, Henry Coleman, Instagram, Henry Coleman, Facebook, Henry Coleman, uh, Comic Henry on, uh, what's that, Twitter? Twitter. Now, I'm a different person on Twitter than I am on Facebook and Instagram. So, if you if you offended by anything I'll say on Facebook and Instagram, don't even go to the Twitter. <laughs> if, you offended at, if you offended at all, don't come to none of my stuff. All right? But at Sam Ridley Comedy on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and at Illegal Opinions Podcast on Instagram and everywhere else. Check us out. Check us out. And I am at Stephen Briggs Comedy on Pornhub. <laughs> And all other platforms. Oh, my whole world. Hey. There we go. I'm, hey, I'm on the front page. Of, I mean, I ain't on the front page of Point Hard no more. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate, you know, 
talking to you guys, man. Yeah, and this will be you. on Kevin's interview next week. So oh, you'll nice. see yourself. Oh, nice. Hang out. You know, but I definitely appreciate you guys. Hey, man. we appreciate you. Thanks All for right. having us. All right. That's what's up, man. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Appreciate you, man. Already subscribe, man. You know what I'm saying? I just I just followed you guys on Instagram. Yeah. I see people, yeah. I follow people. Like that's yeah. something that's something people yeah, gotta start course, doing. We don't support. Oh, we don't support each other enough, man. It's, stuff it? like this should show us we have to because it can be over like that. Yeah, you, so, gotta, support you gotta support each, each other, shit, especially yeah. in a threesome. Okay. Hey, <laughs> 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 just don't touch me. Whatever Steve Briggs said is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you guys. Funny guys right there. Thank you. Uh, social media the is app. always the same. Okay. First, my cash app is the Marine of Comedy. Okay. Cash app. My uh, Facebook is the Marine, Marine of Comedy. <laughs> my Twitter is the Marine, Marine of Comedy. comedy. Uh, my uh, Instagram is the Marine of Comedy. I got cash app. The Marine of Comedy. The Marine of Comedy. All of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything's a Marina comedy, man. Yeah, but yeah. At Sam Ridley comedy, same thing. <laughs> same thing. Everything. You know what I'm saying? You send me, send me money, Everything. your VA claims, whatever. All right? Everything. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be all right. Everything. Support your local comics. Every, here got us Everything. Everything. Sam Ridley comedy. Hey guys, are you guys having me?